Kia good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at this new lens from Panasonic. This is the Panasonic Dumix S100mm f2.8 macro. This is the first macro lens from Panasonic for their full frame l mount system. And there are some really interesting design and features for this lens. So we'll have a look at the image quality and I'll show you my force. But before that, let me go around here and take some photos using this lens first. One of the best thing being a camera reviewer is that I always have some excuses to go out and shoot some photos and videos. And of course, using all these different new camera gears as well. The first thing I want to talk about is the size of this lens. Look at the size of this lens. Panasonic clamps, this is the smallest full frame autofocus macro lens that is 90 millimeter focal length for longer. And I have no reason to doubt it because it is really a very compact lens. In fact, it is the same size as the Lumix S 50mm f1.8 lens. That means it is also exactly the same size as the Lumix S 18mm, 24mm, 35mm and 85mm f1.8 lens. And they all have the same size 67mm front filter thread. This new macro lens extends Lumix unified design fast prime lens lineup. The weight of this lens is only 298 gram, so it is very lightweight and it is also very similar to the other Lumix shorter focal length f1.8 lenses. What it means is this lens can be easily added to your camera bag as a second or third lens, as a macro lens, as well as a short telephoto lens that will be suitable for portrait or landscape or whatever you want to shoot. For photographers, you could also share the same ND or CPL or any other filter that you want to use between this lens and all the other Lumix f1.8 prime lenses and also other lenses like the 2060mm kit lens which also use the same filter thread size. And for videographers that shoot with gimbal, it makes it very easy to swap lenses as you probably don't even need to readjust or balance your gimbal at all. And if you use photo focus system, the focus ring is at the exact same position as well. Panasonic's engineer have done a few things for them to achieve such a small size and weight. The first thing is that the lens has a brand new double focus system. This new focus system uses a dual phase linear motor actuator as the main autofocus motor and a stepping motor actuator as the secondary focus motor. The dual phase linear motor actuator is a brand new and unique technology from Panasonic, which outputs 
two to three times higher power compared to the normal focus motor, which allows Panasonic to use a smaller motor and still able to deliver enough power to do fast and smooth autofocus. The other thing Panasonic did is they used three aspherical lens elements. By doing that, it allows their team to create a more compact optics design without any compromises in optics quality. Well, at least that's what Panasonic said, but we will look at the image quality very soon to see if that's true or not. So that's how Panasonic managed to make such a compact 100mm f2.8 macro lens. In terms of build quality, if you have used any of the other Lumix S f1.8 lens, it's pretty much the same. Even though it feels slightly plasticky, it has the metal lens mount and it is a weather sealed lens that is dust and splash resistant. It is also freeze resistant down to minus 10 degrees Celsius, so it should not be a problem to use this lens under a bit of rain or even snow. Probably because Panasonic want to keep the size of this lens as compact as possible, the lens has no optical image stabilizer. It is not really a problem for Panasonic camera users as all the Panasonic l mount cameras released so far has very good IBIS or the in-body image stabilization system. But it might be a problem if you are using the Sigma FP or any l mount camera that doesn't have IBIS, then this is something you need to consider. Unfortunately, if that's the case, the only other l mount autofocus macro lens option would be the Sigma 105mm macro lens, which also doesn't have optical image stabilization as well. The lens comes with a reversible lens hood that is quite deep, and that should provide good physical and lens flare protection to the lens. On the lens body, there are two switches. One is the AF-MF switch, which allows you to switch between manual focus and auto focus mode. If you want to shoot in manual focus mode, the lens supports both non-linear and linear manual focus mode, and you can adjust the linear focus rotation angle from the camera. If you shoot in autofocus mode, the other switch is the focus limiter. You have three different options, full range, the normal non-macro range, and the macro only range. The autofocus speed of this lens is really fast, and it works very well with the Lumix S5 II that I'm using in this review. Because of that, I found myself usually just leave the focus limiter switch in the full range, and I have no problem with the autofocus performance at all. Only when I'm shooting a lot of macro photos, then I will switch to the macro range to stop the camera from trying to focus on the background. Shooting video with this lens also works very well. With the Lumix S5 II using human detection, it follows the subject very smoothly. Even when I suddenly leave or enter the frame, the transition is still very smooth. It's partially due to the new PDAF autofocus system on the S5 II, but the lens itself can definitely keep up with the camera. We'll look at the image quality now, and as usual, let's start with the sharpness first. If we zoom in the center of the photo, at f2.8, you can see the blue and yellow false color in the test chart, which suggests the lens is already very sharp. Stop down the lens to f4 does increase the sharpness slightly, but it's a really minor improvement because the lens was already so sharp at f2.8. Continue stopping down the lens doesn't make much difference to the center sharpness. You can see the false color all the way to f11. After that, the image becomes noticeably softer because of diffraction. If you look at the corner, at f2.8, the corner sharpness is pretty good. It's not very often that we see false color at the corner at maximum aperture, so it really shows how sharp this lens is. Stopping down the lens would improve the corner sharpness a bit. We get the maximum corner sharpness at f5.6, but to be honest, I think most people would be very happy with the corner sharpness even at f2.8. 
One more thing is focus at the center or focus at the corner of the image doesn't make any noticeable difference to the corner sharpness, which suggests the lens has a very flat field curvature. This Lumix lens is a true macro lens and it gives you one-to-one -one maximum magnification ratio. The minimum focus distance is 20.4 cm and because the length of the lens is just over 8 cm, so the minimum working distance, which means the distance between the front element of the lens and the subject is around 11 cm, so it's not bad. If you don't use the provider lens hood, you can stay quite a bit away from your subject and avoid casting shadow onto your subject when you are shooting macro photos. Now let's look at some 1 to 1 macro photos I shot with this lens. At f2.8, the lens is already very sharp. It's so sharp, I don't think you can get any sharper than that. Because of that, when I stop down the lens, the sharpness doesn't really improve. And the macro photo is starting to become a bit softer from around f11 due to diffraction. Before the lens was announced, I was wondering if Panasonic might surprise us and release a 2 times macro lens. But once I figured out this lens has the exact same body design and same size as their f1.8 prime lenses, then I know it can't be true. Because, well, it is already quite an achievement that their engineers can make a 1 times 100 mm macro lens the same size as their 50 mm f1.8 lens. There's no way that they can make a 2 times macro lens with such a compact size. But if 1 times macro is not enough for you, I do have an easy and cheap solution for you. You can get some macro extension tube like the Viewtrox DGL extension tube set that I reviewed a while ago. The Viewtrox extension tubes cost just around $50 and you can increase the magnification of this 100mm macro lens to 1.36x. It may not sound like a lot, but if you look at these comparison photos shot with and without the extension tube at the minimum focus distance, the difference is pretty big. And you still have autofocus and all the electronic features. And because the extension tube does not add any optics between the camera and the lens, it should not have any impact to the image quality. So if you're interested in getting some macro extension tube, remember to check out my review of the Viewtrox DGL extension tube set after watching this review. One thing macro photographers always struggle with is the depth of field. I'm talking about not having enough depth of field to cover the entire subject that you are shooting. It's because when the focus distance is so short, the depth of field is also very shallow. This 100mm macro lens minimum aperture is f22, so it is similar to most other latest macro lenses in the market. But I do wish it has even smaller aperture like f32, so you can stop down the lens even more to get more depth of field. However, one problem with stopping down the lens to f32 or beyond is that diffraction would make the photo become really soft. So what can we do if you want to get more depth of field when shooting macro photos? One pretty common solution is by doing focus stacking. What it means is you take multiple photos, each with the focus at a different focus distance, and then you use some software to blend the photos together, and you can get photos with a much larger depth of field, which means you can make your subject to be entirely in focus if you want. Some Panasonic cameras have the in-camera focus stacking feature as part of their 4K, 6K photo mode. However, this feature is not available on the latest Lumix cameras like the Lumix S5 II because the whole 4K and 6K photo mode is no longer available. But you can still use your camera's focus bracketing feature to capture photos with different focus distance automatically. And then you can use a focus stacking software to brand the photos together. There are many different software in the market that you can use to do that. In this example, I'm using Photoshop because that's what I have and that's what a lot of you guys are using as well. So to do focus stacking in Photoshop, you just need to load all the photo as different layers into a single image. 
then select all the layers do auto align layers of all the layers and then do auto brand layers and choose stack images this process may take a while which is obviously a downside especially if you have shot a large number of photos but the result should be much better than any in-camera focus stacking processing as you have much more processing power with your computer and you can also do some adjustments of the result if the software doesn't give you the perfect result so this is what I got after spending about 20 minutes total doing the focus stacking using Photoshop, including a bit of manual touch up at the end. I'm not a focus stacking expert myself and I only do focus stacking very occasionally. So if you have been doing focus stacking a lot more than me and have some tips and advice that you want to share with me and my other viewers, please leave a comment below as I would like to learn from you guys. Macro lenses usually renders the out of focus area in a very nice, smooth and beautiful way. And it's the same for this Lumix 100mm macro lens. Bokeh is present looking and not really nervous. Even when shooting scenes with very challenging background like this photo, the result is still very acceptable. When shooting at wide open, there's a bit of cat's eye bokeh near the corner, but it is not too crazy. And once you stop down the lens a bit, then the cat's eye bokeh effect will disappear. This lens can also be used as a portrait lens as well. You can use the shadow depth of view to isolate your model from the background. And at the same time, it melts the background very smoothly. Let's look at the vignetting performance now. And the result is really good with this Lumix 100mm macro lens. Even at f2.8, there's only a very minimal amount of vignetting. And once we stop down to f4, then there is virtually no visible vignetting anymore. Now, these are raw photos converted to JPEG using Lightroom using default settings. One interesting thing is, even if I disable the lens profile correction, it makes no difference to vignetting. And we look at chromatic aberration now. It seems Panasonic has done a really good job minimizing the amount of chromatic aberration. I see almost no color fringing at all when I go through all my different real-world photos. Even the high contrast area has virtually no nasty color fringing. Low color is also very minimal as well. Looking at both my test chart and real-world photos, I see virtually no low color, so that is very impressive. Next, distortion. Let's look at my usual brick wall test photo. Shot as raw photo with lens profile correction enabled, there's pretty much no distortion at all. Look at the horizontal line at the top, it is completely flat. And if I disable the profile correction, there's now a bit of pin cushion distortion. While the amount is quite small, you can see that in this brick wall test photo. Pretty much all the Lumix lenses I have tried have excellent lens flare performance. And this time with this 100mm f2.8 macro lens, it is the same as well. Lens flare performance is excellent with really minor amount of lens flare and ghosting, even when I shoot directly into a very bright light source. Contrast pretty much always remained at a very good level as well. This lens lens flare performance is as good as you can wish for a lens at this price point. The aperture brace for a macro lens is usually optimized to give you the smoothest, most round bokeh balls, and it means we usually have to sacrifice the quality of sun stars. With this Lumix macro lens, you don't get any sun stars from wide open to f5.6. From f8 onwards, you're starting to get some sun stars, but you need to stop down to f16 to get sharper sun stars. At the minimum aperture f22, sun stars actually looks alright, much better than I expected. It looks quite sharp, and the sun star patterns looks quite symmetrical. While I personally prefer sun stars that has less tails, for example, 10 pounds sun stars is my favorite sun stars. The sun stars from this Lumix lens at f22 still looks pretty alright. When shooting photos at f2.8, there is a bit of comma at the corner of the frame. While not too serious, but it is still quite noticeable in this photo. 
once we stop down the lens to f4, then the amount of coma is much reduced. And we'll look at focus breathing now. Let's have a look at my usual focus breathing test with this Lumix lens. The focus changed from 1 meter to infinity. Now, while I can see some focus breathing, but for a 100 millimeter lens, the amount is quite acceptable. It is less than typical 100 millimeter lens. So this is a good news for video shooters as the focus briefing is not super distracting. But this is also good for photographers who want to do some focus stacking as it would be much easier to stack the image together when there's only a small amount of focus briefing. A short telephoto f2.8 macro lens is usually a very popular lens and that's what a lot of photographers and videographers would buy and keep in their camera bag. 100mm is a good all-purpose macro lens that you can use for many different types of macro photos. It can also be used for portrait and a bit of landscape as well. My lower 100mm ultra macro lens is one of my most used macro lens for these exact reasons. So it's good to see Panasonic is offering an alternative to Sigma's excellent 105mm macro lens. The image quality of this macro lens is very good. Excellent sharpness from center to corner, very little amount of chromatic aberration, distortion, lens flare, focus briefing, and vignetting. Sun stars and coma are all right. I won't say excellent, but still more than acceptable. So there really is no major weakness when it comes to image quality. But the biggest selling point of this Lumix macro lens is definitely its compact size and also how light this lens is. It's significantly lighter and smaller than the Sigma 105mm macro lens, like less than half the weight and only slightly more than half the length. It means you could carry this Lumix macro lens with either the 2060mm kit lens or one of the Lumix f1.8 prime lens and the total size and weight is pretty much the same as the Sigma 105mm macro lens. This alone makes this Lumix 100mm lens a very attractive option for anyone who wants a compact lightweight camera kit. I personally think it's a great idea that Panasonic made this lens the same size as the other f1.8 lenses. So now we have six lenses that are identical in size and very similar in weight and covers pretty much all the most common focal length that most photographers and videographers usually need. These relatively small prime lenses were really Panasonic's main focus over the last few years, but now it seems this lineup is complete. It makes me wonder though, what would be the next focus for Panasonic? So what do you guys think about this new macro lens and what lens you want to see from Panasonic next? Drop a comment below and share with me your thoughts. Thank you.